Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, April 18th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome to part two of this news bulletin. My website is www.ggnonline.com, ggnonline.com. And we're going to continue on uh, with the economy here. And it says, cool weather affects apple crop in northern India. It says, bad weather and falling temperatures due to global warming in Shimla of India's Himachal Pradesh state is affecting the region's apple growth. Farmers are expecting to lose 30% of their crop because of the low temperature and poor pollination process. Poor pollination process due to the absence of what? Get ready to pay more for popular concerts and sporting events. Concert and sports ticket pricing could change quite a bit if a new Ticketmaster partnership is successful. And uh, GM General Motors boosting vehicle prices. Uh, GM said Monday it is raising prices by, by an average of $123 a vehicle in response to rising material costs or inflation. So as here, WB warns about food prices and Middle East revolts. The World Bank is warned that the recovery of the developed economies may face further challenges due to the rising food prices, high unemployment, and the uprisings in the Middle East and North Africa. Then we have rising food costs per massive U.S. theft of per produce and meat. It says forget diamonds and cash, rapid inflation and the tanking U.S. economy have birth a whole new uh, wave of organized crime involving food. It says the New York Times reports that a group of highly sophisticated scam artists recently pulled off a massive food heist involving eight tractor trailer loads full of produce and meat all worth roughly $300,000. Go in there and check that story out. 20 signs that a horrific global food crisis is coming. We have number one, according to the World Bank, 44 million people around the globe have been pushed into extreme poverty since last June because of rising food prices. Number two, the world is losing topsoil at an astounding rate. In fact, according to Lester Brown, one-third of the world's cropland is losing topsoil faster than new soil is forming through natural processes. Number three, due, I'm not going to read all these, but just uh, read the first five or ten due to U.S. Uh, ethanol subsidies, almost a third of all corn grown in the United States is now used for fuel. This is putting a lot of stress on the price of corn due to a lack of, uh, lack of water. Some countries in the Middle East find themselves forced to almost totally rely on other nations for basic food staples. Number five, water tables all over the globe are being depleted at an alarming rate due to over-pumping. And it says here in verse 6, in the U.S., the systematic depletion of the Agala, I'm sorry, aquifer could eventually turn America's breadbasket back into a dust bowl. Number 7, diseases such as UG99 wheat rust are wiping out increasingly large segments of the world food supply. So you can go in there and check that out. Then we have 35 facts that show just how much the average American has been destroyed by this economy. And, of course, I'm not going to read all this for time's sake, so I advise you to go in there and check this out. But it says here only 45% of Americans were employed in 2010, the lowest level since 1983. And our, uh, I have a good long-term memory, and I do. I was about four years old um, in 1984, and that's when my father was uh, laid off, and many steel workers in the Midwest were laid off. And it was a hard time in the early 80s. Um, you know, just for, just for getting by. And uh, next one up here is only 66% of American men were employed last year, the lowest level ever since the U and the U.S. It says in the U.S., one-fourth of all income is earned by 1% of the people. And then we have rising prices are increasing stress on American family budgets. It says here, uh, I'm going to cover an article about uh, suicide rates on the next here, right there. Uh, suicide rates in U.S. increase as economy declines, CDC re researchers find. And 74% uh, of Americans will slow down their spending in coming months due to rising food prices. Then we have the price of U.S. crude oils risen $20 a barrel over the last two months. Number seven, Americans spend about 23% of their income on food and gas. And we have 60% of California public school students qualify for free or reduced price lunches. And two more left. In the past 48 months, food stamp recipients have doubled in North Carolina. And lastly, U.S. workers compete for jobs with workers in places such as Indonesia. And um, next up, I already covered this article, the suicide rates in the U.S. increasing as the economy declines. Mortgage rates rise, 30-year fix is at 4.91%. Then next up, we have for uh, uh, the Australia property, land sales fall to lowest in decade on high cost. And it says here, land sales down 40%, deteriorating house 
housing affordability and weak year for home building. And then we have uh, municipal bonds, muni bankruptcy threat makes Michigan train financial SWAT teams. Michigan is giving hundreds. That is one state I'd get the hell out of if you live there because they just passed a bill called financial martial law bill where they can take out elected officials. I mean, I mean, that's that's pretty scary stuff. I mean, every state has that, um, according to the um, the little bug out plan that the federal government has. Uh, called um, cohesion of government and that when the government is uh, uh, basically either goes under financially and there's some kind of uh, uh, uprising, uh, political or uh, economic, social unrest, and they can just go in there and put in, you know, take out elected officials and put in whoever they want. But um, Michigan just passed a bill that was called financial martial law, and now they have uh, financial SWAT teams. So it says Michigan is giving hundreds of financial professionals and public employees a crash course in advising troubled municipalities, building an army of emergency managers that may become a model for other U.S. states. So see, <laughs> a model for other U.S. states. That's a, called a precedent. It says here, uh, Fed's treasury holdings are historically low. Chart of the day it says the Federal Reserve will have a relatively small holding of treasury securities even after its second round of bond buying concludes i.e. printing of money. Then we have this one. We kind of already covered it, but S&P threatens to cut U.S. credit rating. It says here, S&P threatened to Monday to downgrade the U.S. Uh, prize AAA credit rating unless the Obama or Barry Satoru administration, which he has no say in anything, he's a puppet, and uh, actually he's not a puppet. He knows what he's doing. He just does whatever he's told to do. Um, it says, and Congress finds a way to slash the yawning federal budget deficit within two years okay moving on here anarchy erupts in greece as austerity bites and um talking about as the riot as the riots take place uh, a town near athens spins out of control with angry residents setting up massive roadblocks and hurling molotov cocktails so and this word will always be used anarchy um when the government when the people get pissed off of the government's actions and um, when they start damaging private property, they call that anarchy. And I gotta beat it over and over and over and over again, and um, because I'm just sick of that word being, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's disinformation. And um, so here we go. The next up is Bank of America analysis advocates the unthinkable and intentional default on U.S. debt. We continue to be astounded by the emergence of pro-default names within financial circles. And so now it's someone at a major bank of America's credit strategist, Jeffrey Rosenberg, whose note from Friday is titled The Case for Default. So you can check that out. Uh, $38 billion in cuts make that $350 million. And um, it goes on here. And uh, it says the Congressional Budget Office, or the CBO estimate, shows that the spending bill due for a House vote Thursday would pair just $352 million from the deficit through September 30th, about $8 billion in cuts to domestic programs. See, that's what I told you, that cut social programs and keep the war machine going. That's what it's all about. And that was all planned. And then they blame it on you. What? Oh, because you're greedy Americans. You're greedy capitalist Americans. He wanted to actually try to have something that you own, your only form of investment, which is your home. And then uh, these bastards play a rigged game. So, um, you know, that's why it's, you got to know that going into it. And um, it says here, and foreign aid are offset by nearly equal increases in defense spending. It says down here uh, how Washington cuts $38 billion in five simple steps. Number one, announced spending bill that claims... 38 billion dollar in cuts number two wait for the cbo to announce it only cuts 353 million number three realize you do only 0.0093 percent of what you say number four divide 38 billion by 0.0093 percent to get necessary target number five round to the nearest trillion and announce the result that's from zero hedge you can check out the link emerging nations reject capital plan imf delays program to help countries manage short-term inflows as Geithner blames china others blame the fed and then now we have here poor countries pledge to help curb climate change so as um as countries are basically trying to be like all the other countries like the u.s and china and uh, europe and that uh and get their nice big fascist corporatist economy globalist economy 
Um, in order to do that, they have to be part of this climate change uh, uh, little scam fraud. But it's actually going to benefit them because the whole point of this climate change, according to one of the panel members on the IPCC, was quoted as saying this pretty much. This is a paraphrase, of course, not uh, the exact quote. But uh, climate change's purpose is to redistribute wealth. So the wealth from the, quote, wealthy nations like us, uh, you know, uh, Americans, because we're so damn wealthy up here, as people are getting kicked out of their homes and uh, more people are on food stamps, um, you know, they're going to take whatever money we have left and they're going to redistribute that out to these, quote, um, developing nations. So we're going to have EU green tax to add 1.5% to the price of a liter of fuel. So um, uh, the Brits and people in the UK in general are uh, facing uh, high petrol fuel prices, really bad. Um, it says here a British motorist face paying up to 1.5% a liter more for their fuel under a controversial green tax being proposed in Brussels tomorrow. The actually, levy would be higher on diesel than on petrol, which is about, it's just, it's just stupid, right? Because those are the, these are the guys, these trucks. That's the mode of transportation to getting your food to the store so it goes on your table. So let's tax that so the those trucks uh, basically go out of business so the food can't be delivered. And then the next one up, carbon tax will destroy major centers such as uh, Port Perry and Wahala. And this is Australia, of course. The state's two key industrial cities will be wiped off the map by uh, carbon tax. A major union warns the tax would strip thousands of jobs from uh, these two towns. The Australian Workers Union State Secretary Wayne Hansen said, and uh, the internal revolt from labor's industri industrial heartland sorry, threatens not just the reform, but the government's survival. And uh, remember, the whole cap-and-trade scam, and this is, of course, a carbon tax, but uh, the cap-and-trade scam uh, is um, it's pretty sneaky because it, these companies, are, uh, it actually benefits them where they're just going to offset the cost on you. They're going to get the same profits. You're going to pay more for it, though, because it's necessary for you to have those services or products, right? So they don't really care. I mean, in fact, they like it and they welcome it like the insurance companies because what does it do? Well, it consolidates their power in this, in their market, right, and uh, their market shares. So they're actually, uh, this is going to help them kill competition, and that's what uh, Keynesian corporatist economics is all about, is using the government to kill squash competition. Foreign aid farce costs Britain $1.4 billion. Britain is pouring more than $1.4 billion dollars into European Union overseas aid projects, which waste money on useless schemes and support for corrupt regimes, it was claimed yesterday. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's tax dollar money going to prop up dictators like you know Libya's uh, Gaddafi or Mubarak for thirty years. Get what you need from them, uh, you know, basically whatever. Oppress the people. Oh, and then go in there and bomb the people. The civilians and say, "Oh, it's humanitarian. It's a humanitarian effort. See, we don't like dictators, even though we just you know, supported them and funded them, put them there, and and didn't say a damn thing the whole time. Uh, you know, we're done with you. So that's what the whole point is: is to pay off the guy at the top, and then go in there and exploit all their natural resources like oil. And uh, so, yeah, people keep going supporting governments, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get hurt. And you know what? You deserve it. I'm sorry." So, if you're too close-minded to accept the real solutions to this problem, then uh, you deserve to be hurt. I'm sorry, and you're going to get it. It says here, Finland's Euroskeptics poised to form government following election upset. Then banks face $3.6 trillion wall of debt, says IMF. The world's bank uh, banks face a $3.6 trillion wall of maturing debt in the next two years and must compete with debt-laden governments to secure financing. Then U.S. public university presidents pay soar. And of course it does, because what? They're in charge of the indoctrination and the brainwashing that goes on, so you always have to take care of the teachers. Uh, Vermont lawmakers draft amendment to stop corporations from being considered people. Not going to happen. As long as you have governments, you will have corporations. I know about the law and how it was legislated in the late 1800s, but still, it's not going away. So end statism. That's my solution. Cost-cutting Illinois lawmakers target food stamps. That's right. You're going to have them pi have a picture on their ID to humiliate them, I guess. And encourage them not to uh, apply. Households squeezed by sharp rise in living costs. And it says here, capitalism is failing the middle class. No, it's a 
systematic uh, uh, takedown of the middle class because they are a threat to the ruler, ruling uh, powers that be. Orange tells uh, center workers they can keep their jobs if they relocate to the Philippines, then China undergoing a shift into a nation of consumers. And that's what the U.S. went to, went into, basically uh, just bombarded by decisions. This is uh, GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.